Yeah. We're doing? Just we're doing. Tell, we're doing. We're live. Tell me you're, you're recording. I'm recording. All we're right. We're live. We're live. Yeah. That's, this is, okay, so this, I'm going to put this on the YouTube channel. And that's Mark Harmon, the one I talk about all the time. Hey. All right. And so this is, um, Mark came over today and he brought his collection. This isn't all of them, of Roach um, iron-ons. If you know about Roach, I'm not good at the history. So how, you, tell a little bit about Roach Studios. Well, if you started to begin, it was in 1962, the Roush brothers, Russ and Dennis, started Roach Studios. They started out airbrushing t-shirts to get in on the craze. After a few years, the iron-ons came about, and that became the impetus for them starting the Roach Company mail order so that you could order the designs and iron them on yourself. And this is part of history for me as to why I am who I am, because I would see the ads and I would try to redraw them and I'd want to know who did them, how they did them, everything about it. And now that I've gotten to this stage of finding these on mainly eBay, some of them came from some friends that had extras in their collections. I've been trying to find as many of them as I can and I've been preserving them on, this is called Pellon. It's a fibrous material that will not stretch. It's still flexible. But if you put this on a t-shirt and you wear the shirt, it's going to be toast within you know, a period of time. Yeah. These will last basically forever is my estimation. Like this, I'm keeping a flat file. I can put them in a frame. We can show them on the wall. And we're wanting to just preserve everything we can find of all this coolness before it's lost to the sands of time. So I started out small and it kind of just grew. And this is just a tiny fraction of what Roach had because Roach wasn't just about the automotive industry, they branched out into everything. All the old cool designs, all the disco era, everything you could ever imagine. The stupid, I'm with stupid t-shirts yeah. that people would wear, his and hers. I mean, you name it, they were into it. They had a huge collection. And we've just recently found out that Stan Peterson became the man that owned the company down the road. His son, Brian, has acquired all the rights to everything Roach and is working to bring it back. It's been a long journey, but he said he's getting there and we're gonna make a pilgrimage up to Ohio and see the archives and talk to Brian Peterson here as soon as we can make that happen. So there's a lot in the works and we can't be more excited about being able to share all this with everybody. And I jumped in on it through becoming a, you know, without Mark, I wouldn't be a rap Fink artist, period. We, and we, we all know that story. Um, and then finding out through through Mark and like, as you really get into the Ed Roth history, you, you're gonna immediately find out about Ed Newton. And then with Ed Newton, then you start getting into what else was going on. So you get into to Roach and being a printmaker and looking at like how these decals were printed in, I mean, these iron irons were printed in, in the colors they were printed and how even that they were printed so long ago are still held up and, and Mark preserving them is just, I'm so grateful for that. But when we go to Columbus, I really want to see how the, these were printed, like going from Ed Newton's drawings to, to the, to the iron-ons themselves. Anyway, I just, we just, I just wanted to document this where it is like right now and post it. And then if you have any questions like uh, Roach Studios is on, um, when I post it on Instagram, I'll put a link to them and they got a really good um, Instagram um, page that has a lot of the old decals and, and I'm, old iron-ons, I'm sorry, and then the stuff that they're doing now. So anyway, we just wanted to make a short video. How, what time are we at? How long have we been filming? 4.16. Oh, wait. Right. We said we're going to do this is a five-minute video. All right. Well, before we go, I want people that aren't already familiar with to know that when Rolf started his studios, he had various Disney animators and other, draw, other people drawing the art for him on the side. And there's a famous story about Ed going to the Detroit Autorama and setting up his airbrush booth next to Stanley Mouse's booth. And they challenged each other as to who was going to make the most money that weekend. And Ed said, well, I'm going to make a grand this weekend, you know. So he did. He went back over to Mouse. Mouse had made two grand. So the story goes, Ed took a Mouse catalog, went back to California, hired Ed Newton, 
I had him redraw all of the designs in his style. Newt raised the bar for Ed and everybody that followed. Newton is the man that made things what they are as far as I'm concerned. And when Roach Studios was going on in Ohio and Ed was on the West Coast, Ed went from the cars and the designs and did so many other things, he got into choppers. And that was kind of the downfall of it because the Hells Angels involvement with choppers and all this, the major marketing people didn't want to be involved with that. So Ravel dropped Ed Roth, who was backing him with the model cars and everything. That's kind of the impetus behind him closing the studios and taking his job for a period of time at Knott's Berry Farm as a sign painter. So when Roach was in Ohio and Newt lost his job with Roth in California, Ed Newton moved to Roach in Ohio. And these are all done at Roach Studios. And in Ohio, for Roach, Newt was allowed to hide his signature into these. So it becomes a, what do you want to say about it? A quest of mine to find it. And if you look closely, it didn't show in these prints as well. Some of them closed up, but here's Newton's signature here. There's uh, Newton's signatures and this one there, I believe. Newton's signature is legible in this rear wheel here. Where right below it? my finger, see I'm right trying, here? Trying to get your finger, where's your finger? There yes. it is. Okay. Roth wouldn't allow Newt to hide his name in the art, but Roach was cool with it. So that becomes a quest of mine is to find as many. If you look at this design, here's Newton's signature hidden here in these. Because Newt was doing, he was the art director for Roach. He was had his hand in everything for a period of time. So all these cool old fluorescent designs, you can thank Newt for the art behind them. Anyway, that's a little brief history. And, uh, and Newt's still with us, and we're working on getting Newt to sit down with us and tell us some stories. We've had the privilege of being with him, and he's full of stories. He can tell you so many things. It's just amazing to listen to the man talk. So we're trying to nail that down, see if we can't make a journey up there, too, because he's also in the Columbus area. But he's kind of doing his own thing. He was building his own little version of an AC Cobra that he's calling the Cobra. It's kind of a cross of a Cobra and a, his version of what it should have been. So there's a lot going on. Like I said, we were lucky enough to talk to Brian Peterson today, and he's told us that we can, you know, sit down with him. We're going to arrange all that to happen. So hopefully you guys are into this. Hopefully yeah. I'm explaining it well enough that you follow why we're so eaten up with it. And uh, hope you dig it. Thank you.